Hey, uh, welcome back to Dukes on Twitch. Back today with Absin Maverick. Uh, a quick hello to my YouTube channel and followers on YouTube. Uh, a huge thank you to you guys for watching and watching, for, for viewing and watching. Uh, it means a lot. Uh, every comment, every like, uh, I really appreciate it. Uh, no question is ever too simple. Uh, I'm always happy to hear about your lines that you have, that you catch that I haven't caught. Uh, and uh, I do like to respond to comments. So if you do have any questions uh, or comments on games or matches or lines, definitely leave a comment and let me know how it goes. Uh, this is a list that I've been playing for a little while, um, which I have been really enjoying. I haven't played too much Maverick lately. Uh, I guess I did play last week, but uh, Abzan Maverick, I haven't played in a little while. Um, I know Achilles has, of course, created a list that a lot of players are flocking to, which is great. I think Achilles is uh, obviously a, a great player to watch, um, especially if uh, you are a new player to the to the deck or even experienced player. Uh, looking at someone like Achilles for guidance on a list is really strong. Uh, I believe his list is currently black with Plague Engineer and Thoughtseize, uh, no Abrupt Decay or Kaya, which probably is a little bit old tech, but I really like them against the fair uh, metagame right now. Uh, Abrupt Decay, really nice against Delver, uh, but also lands. Um, I do have a new piece on the Green Sun Zenith out on the Maverick vs. Lands matchup, so a huge thank you to Albert Lindblom for doing that with me, uh, which talks about the Lands and Maverick matchup and how it currently is positioned, the different engines and wind conditions they have. Um, and I think Abrupt Decay there is really nice. Hey, Ice Cream. I am not going to comment on that. <laughs> uh... But yeah, this list is a little bit different. Playing the two birds, three noble split. Uh, I really like having two birds in the main deck for black splashes. I think that the second birds and the fourth noble have some pretty big advantages and disadvantages. Uh, I think in a non Stoneforge Mystic list, it's a little bit more open to play the bird over noble because the exalted and being able to attack doesn't matter as much. But I do like that. I get to uh, search for birds without really having to fetch up my black sources against wasteland decks because that's what I'm pretty much afraid of. The reasoning for the second birds is to hopefully keep the black source in the deck for as long as possible uh, and not have to rely on it because there are a few lists out there that are running you know maybe one bird and then two uh, black jewels uh, and if those black jewels go early it can be sometimes pretty hard to cast your black spells which for the lists uh, not running the Abrupt Decays or the Zealous or the Abrupt or the Kaya. It might be a little bit easier if you're just relying on Thought Season and Plague Engineer. But otherwise, yeah, Second Bird has been pretty nice. It hasn't come up yet um, that the, the Birds combo is there. Uh, have I considered siding to the Witherbloom Apprentice combo? Uh, I haven't. I haven't. I think the... The... The combo has to be within a combo deck. I think that there's a, a lot of players obviously trying out the, the combo in like Delver strategies or other mid-range sort of bug decks, which is great. And it's great to see new cards being tested in formats like Legacy. But I think that if you're playing it in a deck like Bug Delver, you're just diluting the bug side of the deck. And by playing Delver, you're also diluting the combo side of the deck. So um, I've been pretty happy with how we've played against the combo. It does seem pretty soft to removal if they do discard their hand uh, and then you just swords the the mage in response to the next copy uh, but otherwise yeah I haven't really thought about it because I don't like Chain of Smog as a card and I think if you're going to play the combo you want to play it in a deck with something like Brainstorm where if the combo isn't on you can make sure that you're not just holding onto like you know one to three Chain of Smogs in your hand uh, so not being able to get rid of them is pretty big um, yeah, I think Maverick has a, a pretty good game against it, but I wouldn't think about playing it unless something really changed with maybe how the cards were. Uh, yeah, I guess how you could protect the combo in, uh, in coming, coming sets. Maybe new cards printed could somehow have some sort of effect on it. Yeah, it's, it's really interesting to see in different decks. I, th I, th I saw it was also in Tess, I believe, or at least the Tess build, which is really interesting. But again, I think it just dilutes the main strategy of the decks you're trying to put it in, unless you're playing a straight combo deck 
through that combo. And then it's a case of why are you playing that combo deck if there's if there's not a better one, but that's really interesting. Uh, the Black Mentor is really interesting. I saw that a Japanese player, I believe, put up a list with it, uh, playing Dead Guy Ale. Uh, and then also Phil Gallagher did a, a list of Dead Guy Ale running the witch as well, which is really cool. Um, I believe it's a witch that has a static ability that your opponent has to pay three life if they cast an instant or sorcery. Or maybe it's... Uh, I'm not actually going to even try, try to go for it, but it pretty much makes one ones and whenever they die you gain a life. That's all I know. Hopefully someone can do a, um, a exclamation point card in chat and I can read it out, but otherwise, let's get straight into it. It costs three life to target. There we go. And then I believe it's whenever you, whenever you cast an incidental sorcery, you get a one, one that when it dies, you gain one life. All right. Legacy league, Maverick, play points. Nice. Ah, uh, so close, ice, ice cream. There we go. It has Menace as well, interesting. Okay. In-game. This goes up here. And down to here. Nice. It does go off a storm, that's very correct. Alright, on the play against Star uh, Ironclaw. Sand is pretty nice. Let me just quickly see if I can... Make this a little bit bigger. No. There we go. Nice. Cool. But yeah, really interesting. So the uh, Sedgemore Witch is 2 and a black. Menace. 3-2. It has a ward of pay three life, Magecraft. Uh, whenever you're, whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, create a one-one black and green pest creature. That has when it dies, you gain one life. Yeah, it seems pretty good in Nick, Nick Fit as well. It seems really cool with our uh, Yorgmoth, the pay one life, sack a creature, draw a card because you gain a life back anyway. Hey Julian, <laughs> streamer license. I feel like if anyone had the authority to give out streamer licenses for Maverick, it would be you. Welcome. Is that you slash Homer? It's Julian. Okay. Thespian stage. Okay. Okay. The Lotus Petal makes me think it's going to be a Depths deck and not a Lands deck. Oh, this could be Nick Fit. Sorry, not Nick Fit. Uh, uh, come on. We know the name. We know the name. Uh, not Ice Station Zebra. It's another one. Tin Fins. There we go. I like your emotes, Julian. Unburial Rights. Sure. We do have the Caracas, which is pretty lucky here. But they are going to get Grizzle Brain back this turn. Pona had a nice hand. All right. So best case next turn is Caracas into Sylvan Library. But opponent does get to sculpt pretty well here. This is a really cool deck. So it's kind of like Reanimator, but it also plays the Dark Depths package. Uh, I think you can find a really good game of it where Matt Nass plays against uh, Reed Juke on Grixis Delver at the GP where they followed Reed through rounds 1, 2, X. Um, and it was pretty fascinating, especially to see how good the the deck is. Sylvan Library's been taken. A little bit unfortunate. Maybe we can draw into something like Thalia. That would be pretty sweet. As just a 2 mana spell we can also cast. Wasteland's not bad. But... It's definitely Caracas. Ice Station, pretty interesting. You played against Tinfins at Legacy for 500 last Saturday. Rip was too slow. Yeah, this deck can be really fast, and unfortunately, Rip, especially on the draw, can be can be unfortunate, especially if you're playing Death and Taxes, which I assume you were playing Rip. It uh, yeah, it can be tough. 
we're definitely playing the Krakus. I'm just trying to think of any downside to returning the Grizzle Brain now compared to just leaving it until combat. I think I'm okay leaving it until combat. I don't think like Stifle is a card I have to worry about in a, in a deck like Tin Fins. But I was considering something like maybe uh, if I return it to the hand in my turn, they could untap, put it in the graveyard, and maybe bring it back with haste some way, which would mean that they do get an attack step. So I'd rather Caracas in their attack step so there isn't a way for them to actually get it online. Hey, JW Donut, welcome. I hope you're well. Deck names do get weird. I feel like there should be a, a synopsis of, uh, of all deck names and, and where they came from. Nofo. I'm assuming it's Natural Order Force of Will. So Natural Order with Blue. Two weeks off until uni time. Nice. Very cool. Very, very cool. I've been probably thinking about what they can do this turn. If they want to use a Grizzle Brand now. If they want to try to go to combat. It was Bant Natural Order. But with no Force of Will. <laughs> nice. Okay. Look at that. The GP and the player name there. Very cool. Bant, a pretty sweet deck. Opponent down to six, which is obviously key for the Grizzlebrand not to draw another seven. Nice thing as well is next turn we can either play the Knight and Wasteland, or we can just hold up Caracas. Opponent does have 14 cards. <laughs> Which is pretty good, let's be honest. Ah, uh, Legacy with Rocks More Monk is perfect. I played the uh the pre innistrad Legacy tournament, or at least the the league, and that was really fun. Uh, especially because it was you know pre Delva, pre all of that, and and Rocks More Monk in, in that sort of format is actually a pretty formidable threat as a three four with life rank life link. Interesting. Uh, I will just float a black. If I can abrupt decay a lotus petal when my opponent doesn't want me to abrupt decay something, I'm pretty happy. I think abrupt decay is pretty dead in this matchup. And it is probably a reason why we've seen a, a drop in the amount of lotus petal. Oh, sorry, uh, of abrupt decay in, in Maverick decks. It's just much better to have cards that are going to be relevant in a lot of matchups. Two petals. Okay. I mean, if I could hit an LED, that would be perfect. Alright. Nice. I'm not too unhappy with that trade. The big question next turn is... Can I play the knight? Or do I have to hold up Caracas? Do I have to worry about uh, something like Goryo's Vengeance? Second Wasteland. I feel like holding up the Caracas is a play that just is me not, not losing the game, but I'd rather get in a play where I can win the game. So actually I'm going to tap out here for the knight, which... My opponent has just six, so that kind of means that they don't have something like end step uh, in tomb, which is kind of nice. And now I just hope, to ha hope that this uh, double wasteland just gets there, especially once the knight is online. This does play around hand disruption, which is nice, but it doesn't play around another collective brutality, which we've already seen. Uh, and sadly, this knight currently is just a two-two.
There is a world where my opponent also plays something like Elishnorn, but I would assume this is just a Grizzlebrand. And there's Shallow Grave, which is exactly the reason why I wanted to keep up the, the Caracas, but I thought we might have a turn. We did not have a turn. <laughs> Living Wish. Okay. Still has yet a creature or land card from your, from your sideboard. Children. Yeah. So this is really nice. This means that my opponent can... Uh, Attack, go to 15, go down to 1, drawing 14, uh, and then essentially sack the child, gain back that 14, and then just draw more. And hopefully get to a stage where they can cast enough spells to then most likely tendrils me to death, because we're currently at 11, so only need uh, the tendrils for 6. Yeah, maybe that's a, a patience thing. Maybe I, I should have just kept up with Caracas, but having the knight is just is so nice. And maybe I should have seen this coming with the collective brutality on the bird, which of course meant that my opponent knew about the knight and perhaps could have, uh, you know, seen that if I lose the bird, I have to tap out for the knight. But if I don't lose the bird, I can play the knight and hold up Caracas. Hmm. Cool deck though. Opponent puts everything in the bin. Interesting. Floating mana and just drawing with a uh, grizzle. Okay. Well, they have all the mana in the world. Exhume. Okay. We do get back Bird here, <laughs> which is probably irrelevant. Opponent really just digging for um, for Tendrils here. That's what I want on the board. I probably just want the Ley Lines and the Thought Teasers. Uh, Gadok Teague is interesting because it does turn off the uh, win for tendrils but I, I feel like leyline already does that because not allowing them to get the grizzle brand into play definitely turns off you know the whole children of coilus into um tendrils one lab man okay another very cool way to win lab man draw draw Opponent does only have seven cards left, so it could definitely just kill me. There we go. <laughs> All right. Uh, I don't want the fair stuff, so I don't want the plague engineers. I don't want the abrupt decays. Uh, I don't mind the collector oof because it does turn off LED and lotus petal. Uh, the remnant can definitely come out. The beast I don't mind. I usually keep beast in just because it's a really quick way to win. Uh, definitely bringing in, what have I done here? I've obviously, ah, uh, that's why. I'll have to fix that. Hey Milo, thank you very much. I hope you're doing well. Uh, Julian. 
they can gain life with children, or did we have the graveyard on lockdown? Uh, did we have the graveyard on lockdown? What do you mean by that? What does that comment mean? <laughs> we didn't have the graveyard on lockdown. I don't mind jumping on mums. Collective br brutality is a little bit annoying, but I don't really care about one of my threats. It might just be the libraries here. Are you answering ice cream? There we go. Um, the one nice thing about library is that if we do want to mulligan to leyline, library is a card that I could also have in the in the hand that allows me to recoup my losses. So I don't mind library. Knight of Autumn's still okay. Just in case of some weirdos. I'm just going to drop some mums. Mums interesting as well though, because it's quite hard for them to win through a mum and something like a Scrib Ranger and a bird. Could also see a, a drop on a sword. And maybe it is just beast. Seems okay. Swords over library? Yeah, I could definitely see that as well. This is a Caracas hand, but... Doesn't have Leyline, but has the lands to cast it. The question is, how much do I want to go into a Leyline hand? Hey, Moss Cardigan. We are up against uh, Tin Fins. Uh, went down in game one. Currently assessing our hand for game two. Which is a, a fine hand. It really relies on the Caracas. Hey, Lurin. Hey, Jimmy. I think Kaya is a little bit too slow for this matchup, but it is definitely reasonable um, against some other ones. I'm not sure if there's a creature I would cut over it, though. Maybe the Knight of Autumn? I'm going to mulligan once. I'm going to try to hit a ley line. <laughs> okay. Um, this hand is pretty funny. I am going to play it, and I think I will cast both ley lines in case my opponent's out is Assassin's Trophy. And we can still go turn one mum, turn two noble, thanks to uh, mum creating mana for cradle. Obviously pretty soft to uh, the Dark Depths combo. Opponent goes to six as well. Hey PvP, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Opponent sixth. Okay. That's going to be fine. So Leyline is definitely a speed bump for my opponent, but I assume they would have either a plan B in something like Dark Depths, or some sort of way to interact with them in the main deck. Force of Vigor is probably not a concern because of the amount of green cards in their deck. I assume is at a pretty big low. So I would assume a card like Reverend Silence would be okay. Thali is pretty strong. I think Thali here is actually better than Hyrock. Just to really tax my opponent. And because of what my opponent could have, I think the attack here is free. We did see... Um, collective Brutality in game one, but that would cost an additional mana thanks to Thalia. So I think the attack there is pretty much free. Hey, Lorenz. Yeah, it's nice to be back on Maverick. Really cool to play some other decks uh, and have some guests on the channel, but... It's always nice to come home and, yeah, have have the deck around. Oof, alright. Well, they are just one land away from, from Dark Depths. Knight. Okay, well, Knight here is definitely better than Noble because Knight next turn means that if they have uh, Thespian Stage, we also have Wasteland online, so that's pretty nice. Um, I am going to attack with... 
just the Thalia here, just in case. I'm not too sure what removal I'm playing around here. I don't think there is any, but just in case there's something for the knight. Not a stupid question at all. I don't believe they play Crop or Elvish Spirit Guide. Um, I think their only fast mana is Lotus Petal and to some extent LED. Um, they do play Unbarrel Rights. They do play Living Wish, which I guess is kind of like their, their crop rotation. Living Wish pretty nice because it can grab anything from Dark Depths to Children of Coilers to Hex Mage to Grizzlebrand. I think I'll take uh, Julian's uh, change here in just going uh, plus one sword and minus a, a Sylvan Library. I don't think I want anything else here. I don't think um, the Teague is relevant. Even though they can win through Tendrils, I think the Ley Lines kind of turn off Tendrils because they, they do act as a, a way to shut down the Grizzlebrand plays. I'm not too sure what the difference is between Ice Station, Zebra, and Tin Fins. Those draws were really good. I mean, Th Thalia into Knight off a double A line is really nice. I'm not sure if Tin Fins is the version without Dark Depths, and then Ice Station, Ice Station Zebra is the version with Dark Depths, if, that, if that's the big difference. Okay, cool. Nice. I believe it's a reference to a TV show. Ice Station Zebra. I believe it's like the name of an ep episode of a, of a show. Leyline Turn 1 Thoughtseize would be really nice. Leyline Turn 1 Thoughtseize Turn 2 Thalia is probably the best start we could have. And then have some sort of answer for a Dark Depths win. Interesting matchup. I feel like on the draw, Tin Fins has a bit more going for it. Or Ice Station Zebra, sorry. Uh, Deafening Silence, or I guess Deafening Silence is probably one of the better cards I could be playing against a deck like this, which also has a lot of crossover to the other combo decks. Let's see what my opponent does. Let's see if they mulligan. I, I don't think this is a keep. They chose to begin with seven cards, which is a little bit scary. Um, the Dried Arbor kind of makes this a six. Turn one Thoughtseize, turn two Green Suns. I think this is a fine hand in the blind, but against this I'm pretty happy to, to go down and yeah, try to mull for, for Leyline. This is actually a pretty funny hand, because it currently doesn't do anything, but it does have access to Caracas and Swords to Plowshares. And if we draw one land, we can cast Birds. I don't mind this dropping a Knight. It means that if we draw a green, we can use the Birds, and not have two Green Suns for Dried Arbor or something else. So I am going to keep this. I'm going to bottom a Knight. Play Leyline. Stage, stage pass, okay. If I can hold this Caracas, I'll be very happy. So if I can draw a land here, pretty much perfect. No. I am still gonna play this out. Hey Dark Cloud, welcome. Hope you're well. Two very hard pieces for my opponent to beat. Which is quite nice. This is definitely an advantage of Leyline, is that it just buys a lot of time. This feels like a living wish. Okay. I wonder if they play Wasteland in the sideboard. That would be pretty interesting. They play Grave Titan. 
Okay, they're probably going to try to ritual into that. Try it, Arbor. Alright, we'll let to land. <laughs> and we do have the swords for Grave Titan, which is kind of nice. So they need double ritual. Well, there's one. And there's two. Okay. Looks like Grave Titan is the play. We do get to Swords it, which is really nice, but then we do have to deal with these tutus at some point. And Dark Depths. Okay. Mum. That's a pretty nice start. I think this turn is just Mum into Birds. And then next time might just be uh, Green Suns for Hex Drinker, keeping up the Caracas, because then the Mum and the Hex Drinker can really keep these zombies at bay. Did Thespian Stage used to kill legendary lands with the old legend rule? I don't believe it was a thing when Thespian Stage was around, but I could be wrong there. So the old rules were uh, something along the lines of if I control Caracas, my opponent can't play Caracas in their hand. Or it was something like if I have Caracas and then you play Caracas, we both destroy our Caracai. <laughs> Caracai? Caracas? I'm not too sure what the terminology is there, but... You both have to sacrifice it? Crazy. Because there was a time, I remember LSV talking about how they used to play um, Tolarian Academy in their crop rotation deck so they could crop for Academy and keep their opponent from playing theirs, which is pretty funny. Living Wish again. Hmm. Another stage. Interesting. Just wanting the extra land. Okay. Oh, Script Ranger. Doesn't really change anything because we have to replay the Dried Arbor. I still don't mind just Green Suns for Hex Drinker here. Jerry Freeman, the man, the legend. Hope you're well. Hot coffee, very nice. I had one this morning. They got it wrong. My, my local barista got my coffee wrong, which was definitely not the greatest start to the day, but worse things have happened. I could get noble, but I do like that right now I can just keep these zombies at bay thanks to Hex Drinker and Mum, and that's exactly what I want to do. Cradle would be an insane draw. Cradle would be really nice. Especially with Hex Drinker. Okay. Alright. I'm gonna fetch... Um... And then probably just play Knight here. I think that's fine. I don't think there's a world where I'm supposed to play the Scrib Ranger. I do want to hold up the Krakus, so I don't want to go Scrib Ranger, Untap Bird, play Knight. I'd rather play one or the other. Knight's a little bit safer. I don't think I have to worry about Krakus not being viable and needing to have a flyer back for the Dark Depths. I think this is fine. I'm not going to attack either. I'm also not going to use the Crackers for Hex Drinker. Obviously with, with Dark Depths in play. 
there is a world where perhaps it yeah i don't think i don't think my opponent could like assassin's trophy the the uh crack is in the same turn as they're gonna copy savannah okay that gives them access to white which i assume might be something like serenity If I did have Scrub Land, if I did have Scrub Ranger out, I could return the Savannah in response to them targeting it, which is pretty interesting. Maybe they just wanted a second green source. A black and one. I only drink ice lattes. Ice lattes are really nice. But in winter, of course, you do want a warm coffee. At least I do. Living wish. All right. I wonder if they play Tabernacle. That's not the biggest issue because we do have the Knight. They get Grizzlebrand. Interesting. I did not see that happening. Another Ley Line. Alright. Hey Langlands, welcome. I did play Ant on the weekend. Fun deck. Fun deck. I do have it in paper. But I don't, I don't have the reps with it. But uh, I, I think we did okay for a... Uh, a returning version. What are we playing against? We're playing against Tin Fins. What do we want to do here? That's the big question. We have a, we have a, a lot of options. We even have something like Double Wasteland our opponent thanks to Scrib Ranger. Yeah, taking out the Black Source is pretty interesting. Turning off uh, Lotus Petal as well. I don't think the Green Suns really has a role here other than... Um, I guess we could... Green Suns for Ramanap? No, because we took it out. Yeah, there it is. How do, how do I play this optimally? I think the first thing we do is cast Script Ranger. That's pretty much free here. Now we get to think about what we want to do with the Scrib Ranger. I don't mind taking them off the bayou. So what if we float off the Dried Arbor? Sack the Dried Arbor. Go and get Wasteland. I am going to hit the bayou. I can untap the Scrib returning the Savannah, but I haven't played a land yet. So what if we do that? Return this, nice, play this, float another one. Yeah, get Wasteland, Wasteland them. We can then use the 3 mana to tick up Hexstreak to a 4-4 four, four and attack in for 4. But they're left with pretty much nothing. And they have a Grizzlebrand in hand, which is very interesting. They must have thought they had a way out through Krakus and Leyline. Not too sure what it was. Always nice to get up in the first one. I think... The, uh, the ley lines in both games 2 and 3 really bought us enough time. Uh, and the Caracas in the third game was, was quite nice as well. And is a case where that hand might have been a trap because I'm a big fan of not keeping ley line hands that don't have a plan. Because there's no point playing a ley line against a deck where in 6 turns you're still going to be just with the ley line play. You really need to make sure you can cast your spells. You have some sort of plan together, like a, a turn 1, turn 2 at least. What you're going to do, what lane you're going to play. Because um, Leyline can definitely get you. A turn one Leyline can sometimes be 
your worst start because it can make you keep some hams that are a little bit skeptical at best. So that was pretty close to one, but I think because Krakus had such a big part to play in the matchup between Tin Fins that it was a reasonable keep. There we go. Tubestown, welcome. I hope you're well. All right. Match two. Up against Jared. Um, this hand is okay. It has something nice because it's either turn one noble into turn two mum and wasteland or turn two green suns or something like collector oof if this is an unfair matchup. Let's see how this plays out. I could also green suns for Scrib Ranger next turn to get the mum down as well. Trop. Exploration, okay. This is gonna be lands. Wasteland, sure. Okay. Ooze is a really nice pickup. And now we have some thinking to do. I think playing Ooze here is just best. I could take my opponent off the trop, but I get really hit by that if they go land, land, loam. If they go land next turn, loam back these two, they could wasteland me, but that keeps the loam in the bin. They could play uh, Misty Rainforest and pass. Which means that if I try to eat the loam, they could have a, a land. Uh, a, um, a cycle land to, to get it back. I think I'm, I'm just going to go for the, the ooze. Because getting it into play is pretty huge and turns off a lot of my opponent's lines. I don't think I'm in a situation where I have the luxury of waiting for it to be a 3-3 to play around something like Punishing Fire. But because of the Tropical Island, I'm going to assume this is like a bug version with maybe Abrupt Decay. Tundra, Savannah, okay. I was not expecting this. An Uro would be fine. Opponent now thinking. Woof. Swords is pretty big. Ponder, interesting. Chose to not shuffle. Plains is nice. Bant lands? Yeah, it's definitely looking something like that. Definitely casting mum. The big question is what I want to what what do I want to do with this mana here? And I think I actually just want to go for like a birds of paradise. So that then I have on black in case I draw a Brapta Cave for the exploration. I could try to save the green suns in case we draw a land and green suns for night, but I think right now, because my only green source is the Noble, I'm pretty happy to try to get that going. This does run me into something like a uh, Blast Zone. Blast Zone would be pretty huge. Bantlands is very interesting, especially with Ponder and Preordain. Hmm. Two cards on the bottom, so they draw a fresh card. This feels like an Uro. Yep. That is more than fine. Riverwood Falls. Okay. This definitely tells me that my opponent is going to be on Field of the Dead. By you. Alright. Well, we can get in. No great target for the Wasteland right now. I am just going to try to keep it for Field.
Loom's pretty good. Casting Uro is fine. I'm gonna swords in response to both triggers just so they can't like put in Caracas and return it. So that feels pretty good. Hey Shock Drops, welcome. Uh, the game's going pretty well. Got up against uh, Ice Station Zebra in game one, which is a variant of Tin Fins. And then currently, ooh, I don't want a six here. Okay, that's fine. Uh, against a Bant mid-range lands based deck, I'm gonna say. Another mum. Still just gonna attack with the one in the air. <laughs> and then probably just play the the mum off the uh, the noble. Um, no, let's let's cast it off the mum. I was thinking that the, the Noble's easier to interact with, with something like Blast Zone, so holding up the planes may, means I can hold up the swords forever, but I think just being able to act like we have something, I'm, I'm okay with this. Loam hits another Uro. It's pretty good. And a Growth Spiral. Interesting. So it's just like a... a Bant ramp deck? Okay. So here's Uro. And this kind of forces me to use the Wasteland. This resolves. They got rid of the Loam, did they? No. Okay. Okay. Not of the reliquary. Burdent. Alright. Well, at least we can start attacking for two. I have seen versions like this that are full color with Omnath, but I haven't seen a strict Bant version yet. Oof. If, if Prime time. Alright. Well, that's probably just field, and that's probably just game, unfortunately. Hmm, double field. I mean, that's a start, but it really isn't with these zombie tokens. I guess we can take a hit and then see if we can draw, draw into something like Plague Engineer, which is a start. I mean, double Plague Engineer gets there, but otherwise it's pretty tough. Okay. Um, I will double block one, and then we can get pro. This is going to be an interesting one. I like taking out the Thalias and most likely the Oof. I do like the Ley Lines. I don't mind the Kaya. Choke's interesting and could be correct. 
I don't mind dropping down on Abrupt Decays. We only saw uh, Exploration. And we do have Kaya for that. And Night of Autumn, which is kind of nice. Plagues are also pretty mediocre. They do stop... Not too much. I think I'm, I'd rather chokes than plagues. That's 58. Nissa's pretty cool. I don't mind Nissa. Um, might just be a decay. See, it's, it's, I'm tossing up between decay and force of vigor. My opponent's playing Bant. So we saw exploration. Two Thoughtseize. Thoughtseize is pretty interesting. Okay, we'll see how that goes. I don't believe there'd be on a natural order build. Um, this is a fine hand. White Cut Plagues. I think because if they get to that position, I've probably lost anyway. I think Maverick just has to try to get to a, a favorable position before Field comes online. And we do have Wastelands, Ramanap Knight to really try to slow that down. Pass. Interesting. Yeah, Plague, I would say, is a more defensive creature in this matchup. But... Caracas is okay. Interesting. Don't mind Green Suns for Scrib Ranger. Untap. Yeah, 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 yeah. Scrib Ranger doesn't do a whole lot though if I am sacking the the Bayou. So I actually like just playing a second knight here. And then just passing with Knight up. I could try to go wide with Cradle, but I think just holding up Knight's fine. I'm definitely respecting um, crop rotation here. pretty happy to turn this bayou into cradle so that next turn I can green suns for scoos and just eat the loam and then attack for a bunch ley line I do have to worry about tabernacle at some point but that point isn't right now EE for three is fine. I can tap down the island, which is nice. Is there a world where I can just get there? I 
Yeah, I don't want to play the ramen up out of course because of the engineered explosives. Oh, you'd play the ramen up out to get the land? It's pretty interesting as well. There is a situation where I can... Noble's pretty much free. Yeah. At least if I play the ramen up, I straight away get value by getting back the the bayou. The engine explosives also answers the choke, so that doesn't really do anything. There is, yeah, there's definitely a situation where I can attack with... Um, so we, we play the Excavator, we play the Noble Hierarch, we get back Bayou, uh, we can also play Choke. A fetch lane would have been sweet. <laughs> Hmm. I think I'm definitely happy to switch trade the ramen up for a land. I should have attacked first. Yeah, I should have attacked first. That's my bad. Yeah, it's a big misplay. I didn't even think of that. They're pretty close to being dead on the crackback. They're obviously, the two damage would have counted a, a pretty big amount. I do want to take them off the Caracas. There's nothing I can do. I guess I can float a green. Just so they don't have white in their turn unless they have a land. I should have actually eaten the Caracas as well with Ooze, but we do have the Noble up, so it shouldn't matter, hopefully. But yeah, not playing the, the, playing the land first was huge. A ponder. Chose to not shuffle. Are they not just dead here? Two, seven. I'm pretty sure that is dead anyway. Definitely some loose plays there. Something I definitely want to work on. We saw EE, which is interesting. I don't think that's a reason to bring in something like... I'm assuming they're playing Mox Diamond and we just haven't seen it. Yeah, nice to get there, but obviously there's some cleaner ways to get there. <laughs> but I... Thank you. 
Thought Caesars are probably where I want to see some difference. Yeah, we haven't seen that yet. Hey, look at Boring. A huge thank you for the, the 11 month. Very, very cool. I hope you're well. Let's go. Yeah, Beast would be sweet. I think I am just going to keep this and see how it, how it slides. They do have a pretty high curve, so Thought Seize even not in my opening hand isn't too bad. And once I have something like an Ooze down or a Kai up, there's a world where... This is a great end. Turn 1 Burden to turn 2 Silver Library. This can get blown out by Force of Vigor, but we'll see what happens. Island. Preordain. Yeah, I wonder if they play the full six. So one of each and then one of each snow. One top, one bottom. I don't mind here, just Library and Second Bird. It doesn't play too well into Force of Vigor, but uh, I think just the, the payoff of that happening is so much better. I'm gonna brainstorm in response. Playing Rimwood Falls, yeah. <laughs> and speaking of, interesting. No force, which is nice. This feels like an EE, perhaps. Okay. They didn't play around Force of Vigor or something like that, but that's fine. Ooh, can we find land and choke? Land and choke would be so good here. No, but we do find these, and I'm pretty happy just to pay eight here. Our opponent doesn't really have uh, any current threats. We gain back some life there, which is nice. Wasteland's gonna be fine. Sylvan Library. They should waste us here. Yeah, because then we can't uh, Green Suns for Night of Autumn next turn. Oh, there's Choke. <laughs> All right. Uh, put on top and pay. I'll go to 10. Is this an island? Oh, it is. <laughs> now they really need to find a, uh, a force. One more land, the Knight of Autumn into Silver Library would be really nice. It's looking pretty good, but Force of Vigor is just one card that can really get him out of this, especially hitting both the Leyline and Choke. Hitting the Bayou to take me off Abrupt Decay, perhaps. Second Choke, Noble Scrib, okay. Put on top, I'll pay for this. Get down to five. We can go play Scrib, untap, return this, play this, play Noble. Nice. This also means we have Questing Beast next turn, which is pretty sweet. I shouldn't um, six here either because we can save the Scrib Ranger thanks to Savannah. We'll save the Savannah thanks to Scrib Ranger, I should say. Yeah, opponent just couldn't get through the hate, which is pretty nice for us. We'll take it. 
Yeah, Sylvan against a deck like Ban, I'm more than happy to go down to pretty low life. Against Punishing, it can be a little bit different because of cards like Punishing Fire and also Valkyrie Exploration. Those can definitely get up pretty quickly. And a uh, big hater, Scott and Tash, watching. <laughs> Hope you're both well. Alright. Wreck McPorner. Uh, pretty sweet hand again. We have a lot of mana acceleration. We have Wasteland for interaction. Abrupt Decay for removal. Green Suns for versatility. So, pretty happy to keep this. What's the number to this year on the authorities? <laughs> um... Pretty happy because we have the Bayou just to lead on the Noble. Means we can attack next turn if we really want to. Tega. Okay. Exploration. Okay. Field. Okay. Speaking of a murder. Hey, true hero. A huge thank you. I think here I'm pretty happy just to take them off the taker and hit the exploration. Uh, true. What did you just play? Uh, and how did you go? Forest. Loam. Cool. Naturally draw ooze. Windswept. Rough morning for hero. This is pretty interesting. I'm not currently in a position where I can play Ooze and make it a 3-3. So I am just going to go f searching for it. I could also play out the bird and attack. And then go for Knight the following turn. But I think Bird is just... I think uh, Scooze is just a little bit too good. There's a world where I leave it, but... Bluffstone and Stage are two really good cards here. But yeah, played against a lot of <laughs> lands based decks today. Definitely uh, a love for grind. This is fine. I wonder if they have a filter land in hand or not. A cycle land, sorry. Because then they can loam back in response to ooze, but then we have double green, so. Ghost quarter. Okay. Interesting. Thalia. Not the worst. Um, okay. I'm gonna play Thalia first. Nice. Attack for three. Blocks. Go to 17. Now I'm pretty happy to try to eat this loam. Cool. And I will play out the bird. I could hold up though. I think next time my opponent just plays Blaston and tries to tick it up to 2. So I'm pretty happy just holding the bird for now. The nice part about bird is that it does play pay for Thalia's tact if you draw a green sun zenith. Which means we can just keep green sunning for what we want rather than having to maybe be behind a little bit. There's also a consideration that the turn one wasteland or the turn two wasteland was pretty aggressive, but I think if I can take my opponent off a green source when they didn't start a mox diamond, it's pretty good. Um, Speaking of the red-green matchup, if you do want to check out <laughs> this matchup, uh, I just did one with Ali. 
who did note that, uh, yeah, usually that play is 34 lands, but only 10 of them produce colored mana, which is pretty huge. So I'm usually of the opinion that it's better to try to go after them. Caracas, interesting. Okay. Because of the Caracas, I'm pretty happy just to attack with the Ooze because then I get in. Actually, I'm going to attack with both because if they Caracas, then I can just replay it in my second main. This way, I get, an in, get in an extra damage if they don't do anything. Nice. Now they're going to Caracas it. That's interesting. Let's get to replay it. Play the land, play bird. Maze is interesting. Obviously, Green Suns now would be great because we can go and get Questing Beast. Second Swords isn't fantastic. Maze and Crack is going to buy a heap of time here. Yeah, at least we're not talking to Merit Lage, that's very true. But then again, a slow death is a lot worse than a quick death. <laughs> we still know about the blast zone as well and they haven't played it out which is interesting Field of the Dead also getting pretty quick I might even just try to get out a, uh, a dry valve here because if I can incentivize them to use a ghost quarter I, I would love them to do that Sons, come on, baby. Canopy's a redraw, which is nice. Knight. Okay. That's pretty good as well. Um, so let's attack with all. have a play, way to play around that. Well, that's actually pretty funny because now we get to play both Thalia and Knight. There is a line where my opponent could crop rotation for Bajookabog, or at least punishing fire the Knight first and then crop for Bajookabog which would be pretty strong. I got the Grove. Stage is really bad here as well because that's been Stage can copy field. Which I assume they should just do now to play around the knight. I guess to also play around us drawing a wasteland and then having knight up, but looks like they don't care about it. Wind swept. Hmm. Unfortunately, here it's just pass. I guess I could attack with the bird, but they have the maze. They can return the punishing fire. One, two, three, that's fine. So they definitely shouldn't punishing fire here. Interesting. Yeah, 
got it. A copy here is very greedy. Surely you just untap. Yeah. I am going to try to get rid of the the field now. Just before there's too many zombies. They do get to copy it with Thespian Stage, but at least then we can, over two turns, try to get rid of it. a little bit too slow from us we had a nice start but then just didn't really have any drive after it which you can definitely get in a deck that doesn't have any card manipulation but really wanted to get some pressure down early before it gets to the stage because there's just something you can't oh and they have a crop rough yeah and then bog take takes care of the the knight it doesn't really. They actually should have Punishing Fire in response. If we go back to... Oh, we can't go back. But you should always Punishing Fire the Knight in response so it has two damage on it. Because if you bog first and then try to Punishing Fire it, I can fetch to make it a 3-3 or do something else. But otherwise, it's usually usually good enough. Uh, forces are fantastic and exactly what I want. Kai is nice. Thalias can definitely come out. Engineers can come out. I don't mind going down on a... Oof's always interesting, but I think because we have the Kaya, I'm happy to trade those out. Kaya does also interact with Mox Diamond, which is nice, and applies pressure to the graveyard if they do have answers to the Ley Line, or we keep a hand without Ley Line. I think this is all I want. I don't think I want the Nissa, just a bit too much. But I really want my Abrupt Decays or my Forces to keep them at just one land a turn. Keep them off the Exploration. Keep them off the Valakid Exploration. Keep them off uh, Sylvan Library. Blast Zone are really nice. Really nice printing for the deck. Yeah, pretty nice clean boarding, which is always a big plus. It's definitely a lot closer of a matchup than it used to be. The second engine in Valakid Exploration, the second wind condition in Field of the Dead, and the second removal spell or way to remove creatures in Blast Zone is really good for lands, especially against a deck like Maverick. But it's a, it's a fun challenge. It's probably one of my favorite matchups to play. <laughs> yeah, Valakid, really interesting, especially when you remove it on your turn. If they fetch or crop and get lands under it, and then it gets exiled, they can still play those lands in the next turn, I believe. I'm not sure how long they stay there for. Let's have a quick look. Valakut. Exploration. Uh, we'd love to play first. It's a one lander with a wasteland. I'm going to mulligan this. Uh, this is pretty much a one lander. Yeah. Alright. Okay. <laughs> uh, keep. The Kai is interesting. Skyclave and Maverick is pretty strong. I do like it in the green-white builds, especially those with Once Upon a Time, because then you can find removal through once. I think it's the Hex in the Knight that I want to drop, and I was going to turn to turn one Mum, turn to Ooze, and then have the option for Kaya on turn three rather than Knight. Kaya getting rid of something like Exploration or Mox Diamond is pretty huge, so Knight being a Green Suns target, I'm just going to keep in the deck. But a bit of a tough one. Because we have to decide that if we don't draw land, if we want to get a basic forest or a bayou for the scavenging ooze to make it easy to draw into a way to cast the Kaya. So another fetch land would be pretty perfect. We'll see what happens. 
I was gonna say Tabernacle would be really annoying. And that's actually pretty nice. Reclaim is fine. That's another way to get rid of... Oh, but nothing? Interesting. Alright, well, I'm not going to pay for mum. Forest. Kaya. Take down and reclaim her. If I can get the exploration as well before they punishing fire this, I'd be very happy. Loam's fine. We have the ooze for that. This is actually working out really well. So let's get rid of exploration. Let's play ooze. Let's uh, play a land first, just in case of some sort of shenanigans. I assume there's nothing we have to play around. And I get to also eat the mum here to play around uh, Punishing Fire. So that was actually a pretty nice turn. That was a really nice turn. That's fine. That probably means they didn't draw a land or they drew it last turn. Wow, uh, I'm going to pay for this with here. Beast, okay. Um, I, I think I just want to tick this up and use the decay. Tick up on nothing. They haven't drawn a land for ages, so there is a world where I just hold up the Decay anyway for something like Valkyrie Exploration, because Exploration by itself isn't an issue, and if we can take care of Sylvan Library, Life in the Loam, and Valkyrie Exploration, I don't really mind. They're currently drawing one land a turn, or one card a turn, and haven't drawn a land yet, so if they draw a land for turn, that's fine, because that's, that's their full turn. Hey Kite, welcome. Yeah, Eureka, Kaya looking pretty nice in this matchup because it is a nice way to keep a hand with good graveyard hate and hate against their, their permanents without having to keep a leyline hand, which is kind of nice. Opponent may be considering crop rotation here. Opting not to. They draw stage, but do they play anything? I'm probably happy as well just to tick down the Kaya next turn. Okay, that's going to be okay. There's a world where I actually just use the Abrupt Decay here, but I think I'm actually happy to go after the Punishing Fire. If they have Crop into Grove, we still have the second green source, so... Pretty happy. Alright. Let's just use this again. If we draw into a land, that's great, we get to play the Questing Beast. Cradle, perfect. Now this really puts the pressure on our opponent because Glacial Chasm is in and out, Maze of Earth is in and out, they need Caracas for Questing Beast. We've just taken them off for Punishing Fire. What's this going to be? Oh, are they going to try to crop? They're going to try to crop into Maze of Earth or Caracas. Hopefully it's Caracas for my opponents. Yeah, okay. They know what they're doing. <laughs> That's okay. We can find an answer for that. Let's 
we can just six here as well. Library's pretty good. That's that's exactly what I was keeping this abrupt decay for. Oh my gosh, we drew the wasteland as well. Oh my gosh. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So we can't Wasteland Beast and Abrupt Decay, but that's okay. Uh, I definitely want to Abrupt Decay the Silver Library. There, There is also merit. There is also merit to not Abrupt Decaying the Silver Library and just trying to beat face with Beast and Scavenging Ooze to make it less likely for them to actually draw out of it. I don't mind that line. Yeah, I actually I actually don't mind that line. I think that's I think that's a better line. Oh no 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 wasteland first! Oh wasteland first! No! Oh Oh my gosh! Oh just Come on, man. Come on, man. Ah, uh, you talk about your lines and then you just... You punt it away. Huge. Huge. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. That is just so incorrect, it's it's actually funny. <laughs> uh, Alright, let's adapt. Well, we definitely attack with both. Yeah, let's recover from this. Okay, that's... F oh, I should have... Yeah, even there, I should have tapped the Cradle for two, Wasteland of the Caracas, and then just eaten both Tabernacle and Caracas. I... It is a long day. I'm going to take it out right now, just so they can't copy it either with our... Uh with stage. Really hope we get, we, I really hope we take this game. Really hope. We even discussed it. We did discuss it. Did we? We did. We did discuss it. <laughs> uh. Classic. Classic. You're playing like me? <laughs> uh. Ay, ay, ay. All good. Oh, at the beginning of your upkeep. That's fine. We have the abrupt decay for that. Okay. Let's eat Caracas. All right. A land is actually perfect. Haha. -ha. All right, here we go. Opponent has one turn. We have two threats. Opponent can't draw an extra card off the Sylvan Library. Uh, Maze of It doesn't work. Glacial Chasm doesn't work. Krakus is out of the deck. It's in exile. Uh, Blast Zone doesn't work. It only comes in with one counter on it. Um, Elvish Reclaimer can't block the Questing Beast, which is lethal. They don't have enough mana to do double Punishing Fire. They could Dark Depths? No, but then they only have one blocker. Nice. Okay. Nice to make a mistake and re then recover. I think a very important lesson there is never to let mistakes get to you. Just recoup. Just recoup. There's always there's always another path. Even if that path is a loss. <laughs> it's uh, it's much better to get over, get over mistakes early on and don't let them affect your... your next play, your next match, your, your full day. 
It's just a game. Just a game. Path to Exile. Hmm. Path is definitely a card that I could consider in the sideboard for, for Maverick. I do like it right now as well with a lot of uh, Delver around. Even though you are giving them a land in most builds because there's a lot of blue-red, I think giving them a land is much better than having a, a Sprite Dragon attacking you or a uh, Hooting Mandrills. Um, some rug decks are playing a basic island, but the majority you'll face are only playing jewels, so Path is just a better source to plashes in most, most, most respects. Oh, it's just a wordplay? Nice, nice. Whew. All right. Opponent hasn't seen Leyline yet either, which is kind of nice. And maybe, just maybe, the Kaya put them off. The scent. Okay, this is actually a fine hand. Leyline into Fetch, Fetch, Sylvan Library, which means we can play around um, any sort of shenanigans. Definitely keeping this. And also, uh, Knight of Autumn to destroy any sort of enchantment straight up. Opponent went to six. Exploration's fine. Land, cool. Pass, nice. Right. I could wasteland here. I wonder if that's too aggressive. They have three cards left. This turns off crop rotation. This turns off. I actually am going to wasteland here. It turns off Valakit next turn as well. I'm pretty happy to, yeah, to be in this position. Rishon and Port. That's fine. We have basics. Sorry, we have fetches. Ooh. That actually makes me want to fetch here. It does turn off Loam as well, but we do have the Ley Line for Loam. But that is correct. Yeah, nice. I mean, this is the mana base that lands can sometimes just have. And now we actually get to make really good use of our mana. We get to play Scrib Ranger. Now we get to, uh, I'm going to keep this for a black source. So let's just go untap this, return this, play this, play this, pass. Wasteland's fine. Oof. All right. Put on top. Put on top. Two, three. It looks like they're holding up Thespian Stage here to copy the forest, which is pretty tough for them because we do have the Wasteland and we also have the Scrib Ranger to return the forest. So what do I want to do here? Ah, returning the forest is part of the cost. So what if we do something like... Return this. Play the planes. Now they can't copy green. And now we can green suns for a knight, which is currently a 4-4. Four -four. Now we get to attack for one in the air. And really just six here. Nice. Now my opponent can't use the stage to copy a, a green source, which is pretty huge. We have the Knight of Autumn as well for something like a Valkyrie Exploration or a Sylvan Library. Opponent is in a really tough spot. Sphere is more than fine. We have the board right now. We get to take them off this uh this thespian stage. Prop decay is pretty good. I mean we can just like honestly riches. How 
Hey, Elmer Baron. Welcome. How can I really pressure my opponent here? I think it does involve... Cradle into Green Suns. Okay, what if we go... Sack Plains. Cradle. Four. Five mana. Here we go. Go and get that. Oh, did I not do it correctly? Ah, oh, for three? Three, four? Oh, no, I could have. I could have. That's fine. That's more than fine. Ramanap Get Back Wasteland's pretty interesting. I don't mind that. Ah, Sphere. Of course. There we go. Yeah, this is actually fine. This is more than fine. There is a world where Tabernacle into Wasteland Cradle is tough, but then we still have the Knight around. Yeah, I should have taken the Sphere Entry into consideration, but thankfully, Maverick does what Maverick does. <laughs> nice! Definitely grinding as well. Not getting any free wins. It's the best part. Yeah, the draw lined up really well. I mean, the opening hand was fantastic. Double double fetch land, Sylvan Library, Leyline, Knight of Autumn, Scrib Ranger, and I think a Wasteland as well. Really nice hand. So we've played against Red Green Lands. Bant Titan, I'm going to say. Bant Titan, seeing as playing Uro and uh, Primetime. Uh, and then the first round was uh, Tin Fins or Ice Station Zebra. Sorry. Yeah, if you're looking for some sweet Maverick vs. Lands content, definitely check out the newest Maverick Maverick matchup series with uh, Albert uh, Lindblom, a very good Lands pilot who gives his thoughts on the matchup. Up against Dan, and got a one lander with three swords. Gonna mulligan this. Uh, got a one lander <laughs> with Mum. Hmm. The really tough part about this is that the Sylvan Library could be huge at getting us back into the game, but I think this hand is a trap with the one lander, so I'm gonna mulligan this. And I'll keep this, and I'll bottom second Thalia, and probably Mum. I think turn one Noble into turn two Thalia, hold up swords is good enough. The Mum's a little bit interesting, because I can cast at turn two, but I think I think this is a pretty good five. Uh, I'm also going to go for a Bayou, just in case I do draw into like my Plague Engineers or Abrupt Decays. It just turns on all my colors, which is kind of nice. Scolding time. Okay. This feels like a bolt. Alright. Interesting, now I have the option of playing Mum around Days. Thalia is really good, but 
Bolt on Hierarch definitely makes me think they have days. So I'm just going to play the Mum and Pass. Second bolt. Ooh, but no land. Okay, if we can draw land here, this all works out. This all works out. We don't, but that's fine. Yeah. Rough. Mm-hmm. That's not too bad. Okay. See what this Delver flips. Or if it does flip. Doesn't flip. Okay, so they drew the Delta. I don't mind just getting rid of this, uh... This Delver now. It isn't the greatest amount of pressure, but taking it off the field is just really nice to make my opponent having to start dig for a, a threat. And if they have like a whale here, then that's fine. No, Prime Answer. Okay. Well, that's a great card to get rid of. Uh, the reliquary scrubland i'm actually going to hold that for now seeing i'm only drawing one card a turn i'd rather just keep it as unknown information two cards on top Valley is not too bad here. I'm going to play the land here so they can't daze me just to turn off the Caracas. Daze. Okay. It's good to know about. Oh, but they have the days. Yikes. That changes everything if we draw a land. Especially when it comes to the race. They're currently on a five turn clock. So even if they like tap out here, for like a 3 drop it means that the quest abuse can come down and can't be days thanks to Thalia. Nothing. Hex is pretty good. If they don't have an answer for this, I could see a force pitching the days. They're going to brainstorm in response. Okay. That's fine. That means if it resolves, we can definitely use the Krakus to tick it up to three instead of holding it up for Thalia. Because they can't currently make any sort of play to it.
So this will be pretty interesting. Interesting. I'll take one into it and keep the Caracas open, because Fork Bolt would be a huge, uh, a huge play. Definitely want to play around that. Okay, well, do they find a land? Because they did use a daze there, which could be the daze that flipped the Delver. But if they shuffled here and don't play another land, they do have one in hand from the daze, so they definitely have one. They chose not to shuffle, which is pretty interesting. All right. Bye. All right, let's see what this does. Kind of definitely thinking. Wow, it resolves? I did not see that coming. Hey, Punishing Waterfalls, welcome. So now it's a case of either holding up Caracas or pumping into Hex Drinker. I think I'd rather just hold up Caracas. Just in case I've called like Fork Bolt. And I think just because of how our mana currently is, we have enough to try to just pump into this Hex Drinker anyway. They might even just have like Land Double Bolt. Guess we'll see. They obviously aren't keeping the Insect Elaboration back for blocks. Maybe they have a Bounce spell? Oof. Okay. Interesting. Hmm. Oh, I could go for scavenging ooze. Gains me life and goes to seven, which is interesting. So I think I will attack first. I think I do like attack. I can't beat Bolt Bolt. I could get a Scrib Ranger, which blocks the Insect Elaboration. I could get Knight of Autumn if they tap out <clears throat> and gain four. But I think getting Ooze is a little bit better. Let's attack first. I could definitely threaten lethal. I guess threatening lethal is also nice because then I can green suns for just uh, birds of paradise to block. It looks like they're going to do something. Maybe stomp? Petty theft this. Okay. That's interesting because I could return the questing beast to fizzle the petty theft, which actually puts the, the creature in the graveyard. Oh, okay. Um, I think I let this resolve. They take four. With the, we can then green suns for birds of paradise and then use the other two mana to take up hex drinker to a four four. 
I think that's better use of my mana. I could also go for uh, Knight of Autumn here, which gains me four life, which is also pretty interesting. A lot of plays here. Have five cards. Yeah. I. This is actually a really interesting one. Hmm. Chat, let's get some, uh, let's get some, let's get some hypotheses going. Green Suns for Night puts me up at 10, which is pretty huge, and also puts a 2-1 into play. I think it is Night of Autumn. It just, it just makes sure that I still have enough pressure on the board, but I also get myself out of, like, bolt range. I think it's just playing it a little bit safe, which, which is fine. They can't force this, they can't daze it, which is nice, thanks to Thalia. Yeah. Knight of Autumn. Gain four. Yeah, I think this is this is nice. You like Pump Hex? Yeah. Pump Hex is also nice because then we can also use the leftover mana to um Green Suns for Birds of Paradise. I've just always been respecting Forked Bolt. Forked Bolt and Fatal Push. Yeah, I think I think the start is Fork Bolt. Take out the Thalia and Hex. But outside of that, they don't have too much. Ponder's fine. <laughs> I am very happy to see a Ponder, especially at two mana. Chose to not shuffle. Okay. No attack is, is pretty strong. <laughs> I think here we just tick up the hex and just attack with what's on board. This way my opponent has to block at least one thing. Yeah. Nice. Very nice. Uh, Knight of Autumn can come out. Uh, the Sylvan Libraries I don't mind dropping. The Collector Oof I like taking out. Uh, I do like the Zealous Persecution, especially against Young Pyromancer. Uh, I do like Kaya. Um, as a way to generate some advantage to take out Delvers and then also just have some sort of interaction with the graveyard outside of Scavenging Ooze. Uh, and then the two Chokes, I don't mind. A little bit less favored of, of favorite, a little less happy about the Chokes on the draw, but I think that's, that's fine. That's about right. Nice. Uh, 
Uh, this is a great hand. I'll keep this. Really nice. A little removal. Scrib range is obviously quite nice against Wasteland. Hey, Korst. Thanks for the uh, follow. Uh, let me know where you're from. Uh, if you play Legacy, what do you play in Legacy? Yeah, PvP. It does, which is quite nice. Let's see what that Ponder did. Chose to not shuffle. Okay. Wasteland. Nice. They could be on Stifle, but I'm happy just to play out the Windswept Heath here. Volk's more than fine. I'm going to play the Wasteland out and pass back. Hey SSJ, thanks for uh, subscribing on YouTube. I'll see you on YouTube. <laughs> uh, I probably want to waste on an upkeep. I'm going to brainstorm now. I'm going to let this resolve. What they could do if we wasteland the, the Volk with the Brainstorm on the stack is actually daze it, return the Volk to their hand, and then pay for Brainstorm, and actually saves the Volk as well. So let's see if they have it or not. They don't. Okay, that's pretty big for us. That's huge. Delver's okay. Yeah, pretty happy just to throw this Wasteland away. Especially seeing they didn't have it last turn, I'm happy to do it now in my turn. There's a world where if they don't flip the Delver here, I'm actually happy to also go and get a... a Dried Arbor, but... We'll see how this plays out. So we know about Painful Truths as one card. Swords, okay. I'm just gonna play Savannah and pass. Maybe there's a world where they cast Painful Truth next turn. We can cast Scrib Ranger in response to see if they'll fight over it. And then... Slam this Choke. It looks like they might just be going for pain Painful Truths right here. That's gonna be okay. Fetch. Um, it's just going to go for a forest. Play Scrib. Okay. Block. Alright, I could play around days, but we'll see what we draw into. We draw into birds. That's pretty interesting. I think slamming choke here is just so good if it resolves. The big thing is, though, that I'm not really... Like... I'm not really scared of anything with, with my hand. There's no threat that I'm really worried about. So I could play around days. But... It's just so good if it resolves. Hey Moto Baggins, love the name. Thanks for the follow. It didn't daze the scrib. Let's 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 see. They force it. Okay. That's fair.
Yeah, I thought they would have used days as well on the screw, but I, I can see why why you wouldn't force the, uh, the Scrib Ranger. Double black. Last hope. Wowzers. Okay, luckily we have Abrupt Decay for that, but that's pretty scary to know about. Get rid of that. I should have used the forest. It doesn't really matter. Um, I am going to get rid of this insect elaboration right now. Playing around days. And then play bird. It looks, yeah, very uh, very grindy with cards like Painful Truths and Liliana. It's like a, a Grixis Delver build that's just a little bit slower than, than other versions. Or at least a bit more grindy in the, in the post board games. Yeah, I would say the black usually tends to be more, more grindy than the other versions. I guess rug can be pretty grindy as well, but... No shuffle. Okay. Nice. That's pretty perfect. Let's exile painful truths and brainstorm. Land pass. Guess they could have like brazen borrower. That's fine. I could ZP now or I could let them untap. I think we'll see what happens. Could also just block with the bird. Yeah, I don't mind blocking here. Please play Young Pyromancer. Oh, they're fetching. Probably another Pondo. True name would be sweet. Oh, the witch. Interesting. Okay. Very grindy. Hey, well that's pretty nice. I don't have to pay here, which is nice. Would you like to prevent three? No. Haha. -ha. And now I get to eat it. And sh I probably just want to zealous now. Hmm. It is pretty greedy to keep it, but. At least if they have Force of Will, it means they tap out, so they can't just, like, attack and then bolt Kyle. But yeah, there's definitely some play to keeping it uh, for my turn, or just doing it on my turn. 
Okay. I'll take that. Pond is cool. Chose to not shuffle. Okay. Interesting. Green suns. Knight. Just as good. There's a world where I want to keep the Brazen Borrower in there just for uh, Scoos. Kind of six here as well, which is nice. Okay, most likely means my opponent has like Fatal Push perhaps, or a Bounce Bell. I don't see Knight staying around, unfortunately. Yeah, the, uh, the big whale is definitely uh, a consideration when exiling things, like the ponders and brainstorms. So that's, yeah, a big one. They're getting pretty close. They currently have 8 cards in exile, uh, and they're currently at 16, so an attack for, with knight would have made 11. So getting there. Definitely getting there. Interesting. Interesting to bounce the Kaya. Full respect. They could have also have cards like Liliana's Triumph. Looks like just a pass back. Interesting. Because if this knight survives, I can also take them off their third Volk. And I assume they're not playing a Badlands, being a Daze deck. Leave Kyra alone. Alright, let's go to draw step. Ooh, okay. I wonder if I can just cast the Kaya. This is actually interesting. Maybe I can cast the Kaya and then get him to force it. Please force this. Come on, Dan. They leave it? Ah, that's no fun. They could, like, submerge the knight here. They don't. I'm just going to get Wasteland and then use that as the third mana for Choke. This makes it really awkward with Brazen Borrower. If they do want to cast it, they lose out on three. Price of Progress? Haha. <laughs> Wow. Okay. Maybe they have engine explosives? No, they can't. I guess they could. EE for three and then two mana to destroy to destroy the choke as well.
interesting. Opponent using the uh, the Volk as well to cast the Brazen Borrower, so they can't like bolt it here. They have to have another landed bolt. Yeah, I don't I don't see what the route is. Nice. That is what you want. Whew. Very cool. Yeah, four cards in hand. Not sure what they were. Not sure what they were. Yeah, Kai was really nice. Even the incremental damage or the incremental life gain of just two is is really effective against a deck like Delva. In some ways, a little bit like Oko and Food, but not as... No words explain that. No words explain that. Thankfully, Oko is, has left. But yeah, always nice to be 4 -0. Some interesting decks along the way, which is cool. Oko busted never. Probably a bunch of one drops they didn't want to run to Kaya. Yeah, that's fair. Definitely a tough spot. It's kind of like um, running creatures out into a tabernacle in a way. Yeah, exiling Astrolabes with Kaya was nice. Exiling Uros was fantastic. Some, some real nice ones. All right, up against uh, Reza. Come on, a, a nice seven would be would be really nice. Oh, Yorion. Uh, I'm happy to keep this. Turn one Noble into turn two Library and Wasteland or Knight is pretty good. I could even see myself fetching to play the Knight out as a three three. Yeah, I'm going to assume it's a Luron, which is pretty tough, but or uh, or Food Chain. I also need to go to the bathroom really badly, but hopefully we get some time for sideboarding. Opponent goes to six. Whew. Please play a dual land. Ooh. Okay. What does Ponda do? Hey, P underscore B, thanks for the follow. They chose to shuffle. Okay, maybe they're looking for lands. Ramen up. Okay. I don't want to show the wasteland yet, so I'm pretty happy to go Scrubland, Sylvan Library attack for one. Yorion has you on file. Nice. EE -E for two. Okay. Can we find a Barrop Decay? Yes! <laughs> so good. So good. I do want to wasteland this turn, so I, I don't mind paying for these, but at the same time, I don't want to be using my life total to pay just for lands. So I might just pay for one. Just so I can dig further next turn, because I do want to play the yeah wasteland, abrupt decay, attack for two. All right, let's um put on top pay for this.
I could definitely pay for eight, but I feel like if my opponent makes their land drops, this game's gonna get pretty grindy. And I, I do wanna get in a position where I can use that, that life total to draw cards that are hopefully a little bit more impactful than just a land. But I can see also the a bit of an enticement to dig as well. Thanks, Granham. A huge thank you. Flooded Strand. Rainstorm. Interesting. Put on top. I don't mind paying for this fetch land to have two fetches. I don't believe my opponent's going to be on a, a Miracles deck, so I don't mind playing out a Knight here. The other play, if I did really think it was going to be Terminus, it is Terminus. Interesting, because the other play was play Ramanap. And then play Wasteland and Wasteland the Fetchland to make them shuffle. But I just did not think of Terminus. Alright. Oh, but no land? We do want to fetch. Uh, I am just going to go for a basic. Not great, not great. Put on top. Put on top. See if Ramanap survives. Okay, get back the waste. Ah, uh, get back the fetch land because we don't want to fetch. Whew. Swords is okay. I don't mind getting out Dried Arbor here, just to really get some, some damage going. It's only one a turn, but it means that if there's just something like, um, you know, Noble Hierarchs on top, we can start attacking with Exalted. Removal is not the half of my deck I want to be finding when I'm trying to be the beatdown. Especially when my opponent is missing on land drops every turn. Something like Caracas Questing Beast. Or these. Okay, put on top. Pay for these. Um, happy to play Thalia first. Okay. Well, now I don't mind just playing out Knight. They have second terminus, they have second terminus. There's a land, that's okay. Trop. Maybe Uru? Abundant growth, okay. That's gonna be fine. Put on top. I could pay for this green suns, to be fair. Because I do want this wasteland.
I don't mind a brought decay here and keep the green suns for something like Questing Beast. Get Caracas with Knight, that's also interesting. I think that's just a bit too slow. Because currently it's putting him on a two-turn clock, which is pretty huge. But uh, I could I could definitely see the appeal of going for like just playing around uh Caracas a playing around Terminus a little bit. Hey Rob Fighting, welcome. This is okay. I do like Mum here. Beast is interesting because it takes him off a of fetch land. I don't mind in a fight between Brisbane and Melbourne who would win. It would be interesting. Okay, so worst case is my opponent untaps and has a terminus. Which means that I don't want to put too many creatures in, in play. But I also want to be in a position where they can't, like, snap into swords. So I don't mind... Just Mum. And keep back Hex and Green Suns for Questing Beast's extra ways to win. I guess um, uh, Green Suns for Questing Beast also costs an extra mana due to Thalia, so it'd be attacking for six. But it is pretty fun. <laughs> yeah, we have to only attack with one. I I kind of like QB. I'm gonna go for QB. I think QB is the the funner play, and that's what I'm that's what I'm here for. I'm here to have some fun. Who doesn't love seeing questing beasts? Can we get some? Uh, can we get some questing beasts in chat, please? I think the the dude is a little bit hungry. Oh, it's gonna just resolve, which is nice. Upkeep, draw. Ah, main. Yes. <laughs> uh. Like, land to snap sword still does it, which is tough. Yeah, okay, nice. Alright. I'm gonna go to the bathroom real quick. I'm gonna say this is like a four-color control deck, so uh, let me know how you guys think we should board. I'm gonna assume these cards are coming. I assume these four are coming in. Most likely these four as well, but have a good chat.
Do they play the snake? That's an interesting one. I think it's it's some number of these eight uh, in the maybe pile. Plagues, I think he can come out. Oof can come out. Probably some amount, if not all of the swords. Uh, I also like taking out the cradle against these matchups. And Decay is interesting. Decay could be hitting something like a Back to Basics or a Mentor. Mentor and Containment Priest are probably cards that I worry about, but at the same time, seeing Yurion, maybe not. I don't mind cutting a Wasteland. Hmm. I could see like one Swords kept in, just to make sure I have an answer to something like a, a main deck um, or an on the field creature like Mentor or Uro or a Hateful Piece like Containment Priest. The issue is that the Plague Engineer doesn't take a, like a, a Containment Priest off the field. Force of Vigor is definitely interesting. Maybe Force is better than Decay. Yeah, I don't, I don't mind Force. They can't play. Yeah, okay, that's very true. They are Yurion. Scrib is pretty nice as just a flash creature. I think PvP, all the best. Enjoy work. Why does this deck play Nissa over Gideon? Uh, for this role, Wasteland isn't that great against basics, but the uh, plus one gives Wasteland a nice role in this matchup, so I don't mind that. Okay, this is actually a pretty nice hand. Turn two Library, or turn two Thalia. Probably turn two Thalia to play around... Um, something else. Fetch Pass. Night of Autumn. Okay. Uh, yeah, and this is pretty cool because the plus one gives some life to cards like Wasteland against decks like Bant Miracles that play a lot of basics. And yeah, Nissa does have immediate impact, which is nice. It's very cool with our Cradle, and of course, Christmas Land is something like Fetching now, interesting. Library, that's fine. I think here I like just playing our own Thalia as a bit of bait. Probably off just basic basic as well. I kind of want to keep the library until I kind of run out of land, so let's just go basic basic. Forest. Plains. Thalia. Nice. She can animate Caracas. I know that uh, Julian in chat has attacked with a Caracas uh, that has a Jide on it, which is pretty cool. But it went to 10. Wow. I really want them to tap out without me losing the Thalia because then we can cast the Knight next turn to destroy the Sylvan Library without having to worry about anything. I could definitely think of keeping the fetches as well. I don't think my opponent's going to be on back to basics with the Trop in play. Interesting, just a pass. Well then... I don't mind attack first. Okay, I actually am going to return here and just recast. If they want to force it, that's fine, but okay.
I guess Teferi Bounce is something. This could be really interesting. They could just like snap swords here. Or just another swords. Okay, that's fine. Knight. Alright. Um, I am going to Wasteland here. And then go to second main if they float mana. Okay, they don't float mana. Well. Hey, Orange Shield. Welcome. Haha, <laughs> I won't. Thank you very much for coming and watching. I hope you're doing well. Hopefully uh, NYC is doing okay. I know you all got hit pretty hard by the COVID. In fact, COVID, uh, by COVID, so. Pitching back to basics. They did have back to basics. Interesting. But yeah, I hope you're well. Hey, Cervex. Thanks for the follow. Uh, let me know where you're from. Uh, if you play Legacy, what do you play in Legacy? Canada? Very cool. Nice. Hey Alec, welcome. Alec is a Maverick player who made the top four of the recent Legacy Challenge, which is very cool, and has a uh, tournament report coming out on the Green Suns in it tonight. After this stream, I'm going to get to it. Okay. Teferi's the card that I really don't want to see, so... I think here I'm happy just to play a knight out, but my opponent could just be holding up uh, snap into swords. So I could also see just green suns for scavenging ooze, which is interesting. Hey, Duke. <laughs> Thank you. That's very nice to know. This is actually a pretty interesting spot. I don't mind Verdant playing Knight because it means I can hold up Dried Arbor if they try to play a Teferi and tick it down. This brainstorm. Okay. Setting up a Terminus. I can only assume. You think they're digging for Uro? Yeah, that wouldn't be too bad as well if we are patient. Maybe we can get to a stage where we can green suns for Ooze and then eat the Uro while it's still in the bin. It's calming. Yeah, this is the uh, this is the Stream Beats ambient playlist, which I haven't played before. I usually play the Stream Beats lo-fi playlist, so a little bit of change here. Cold? How cold is it, Nathan? Cold in America is definitely a lot colder than it usually is anywhere else. Ice Fang, okay. I guess they are a Yurion deck. Makes sense. Another Green Suns. Hmm. Two cards left. Beast is good, but I think I want to get to another land so I can hold up Caracas with it as well. I think I'm okay just playing another Knight. And then fetch and play Sylvan Library off a Bayou. 10 degrees? Ugh. Yuck. <laughs> Maybe Force Negations in the deck. Interesting if they kept that in. Huh, okay. Nathan, I think the, the best thing to do, especially in... Jace. Okay. This is still fine. 
We're still getting to a situation where we can deal with Jace with Questing Beast. Especially if we draw a land, we can also hold up Green Suns. They're going to brainstorm. Wow, okay. Yeah, get a blanket. Blankets are the best. When you can, like, roll yourself like a... Yeah, blanket. 100% blanket. No better feeling. No better feeling. Jace brainstorm's pretty interesting. Land... Okay, there's the land. We're going for it. We also have the play of Wasteland, the Misty in response to Brainstorm if they have Terminus on top. Alright. Can't block. Kill Jace. It's pretty good. Definitely a tough position for my opponent, but... Having the second Green Suns for Questing Beast is pretty huge. But my opponent, you know, definitely has some, some nice outs. Snapcaster into Swords and Uro would gain them life. They're going to fetch. Okay. They are pretty close to being boned, which is nice. But against a, a Bant deck, I will, I will never throw the Talon until I see that my opponent has conceded. <laughs> Oh, Sanctuary. Put back Brainstorm. Interesting, they're going for Brainstorm. Yeah, alright. I think I'm happy to see what happens here because I might even just get Dried Abba to have an extra attacker. Feels like an Uro. Maybe Teferi? Interesting. They floated mana and then passed? I don't understand that. Uh, let's... Trade out the planes. For a Dried Arbor. I rock. I'm gonna draw a card. Mum. Alright. Happy to attack with these two. Brainstorm probably means Terminus. There is a world where I could have green sun for Gadoctique. This is. gonna be okay. Hmm. So they haven't paid for it yet, so we can wait for them to pay for it. I didn't want to trade the, the Ice Fang for the Knight, because if they have a removal spell for the Questing Beast, they have a removal spell for the Questing Beast, but otherwise, then they have to deal with it. I'm also pretty happy to... turn this forest into a wasteland... Maybe I actually want to land. Yeah, maybe I want to win swap teeth just so I can get the um the dried arbor in just in case I really need it. Yeah, so the arbor goes into the great into the library.
I wanted to keep the questing beast in my hand, so uh, I used the Krakus there. Because I kind of want a Green Suns for Gadok Teague. Because there's also a line of fetching for Dried Up at End Step, untap um, Green Suns for Gadok Teague, hold up Krakus. And then Dried Up is, is the two lethal with Exalted, with also protection with Mum. Heat packs are really good, Nathan. Especially the ones you can put in the microwave for a bit, take them out. So good. Game changer. Even if my opponent taps out for a hardcast terminus here, we do have um, Dried Arbor into Green Suns for Noble High Rock. I think I like that better than just trying to hardcast Questing Beast because if they want to force the Green Suns, it's pretty, pretty okay. something like Snapcast of Swords is pretty good. Uro is also pretty good. Puts them to five. But then we have Questing Beast with Exalted, which is five. Interesting. Hit him with the tree. <laughs> I like that. That reminds me of a uh, Pokemon. I think it's Silver and Gold where you have to get, um. Uh, is it Shura Wood? You have to catch it at level 20 because it's blocking the path and it's got those big trunk hands. Classic. Sudowoodoo, that's it. There we go. Oh, red. Interesting. Three mana. From the ashes. Okay. Yikes. We get, do we get a lone forest? Yeah. Play Yurion. Oh, but, but this isn't good enough. We have pro, we have pro with attack. They have zero cards in hand. We get the 5-0. Oh my God. Yes. Nice. Very cool. Very nice. There we go. Nice. Very cool. Sweet. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Sweet trophies. Nice. Very cool. Too kind. Too kind. Very nice. It's just a trophy, but for me that's that's everything. Nice. That's really cool. Um, deck list. Where is deck tech? Bada bing bada boom. Bada bing bada boom. Chests, let's go. Haha. <laughs> uh, list was sweet. Um, I think there's definitely some play with what we are playing. Um, I think if there's any flex spots, any flex spots, it's probably the two decays. Um, and probably the mums, which is interesting. What decks did we meet? We played against, uh... Ice Station Zebra. Uh, we played against uh, Green Red Lands. We played against Bant Titans, which is like a lands deck. We played against Grixis Delver, and that like Bant, uh, maybe four color Urion Control. So this is some pretty sweet decks. But uh, yeah, I love the the deck was really nice. Um, the extra birds definitely came in handy, just making sure the mana for for black was smooth, which is cool. Um, they're looking back. I'd probably rather have the Gadot Teague in the main deck and the uh collector oof in the sideboard, but I could also see just both being in the main deck uh, and maybe moving the abrupt decays to the sideboard because there's not too many, there's a few matchups where they're not that great. Hey, Remix, welcome. I hope you're well. Uh, hey, everyone from Ryan's chat. I hope you are uh, had fun. 
I'm assuming you're playing standard Ryan. Yeah, Kaya was really sweet. Uh, big fan of the one Kaya. Uh, especially against lands. Uh, it really played uh, a pretty big role. Um, just being able to exile things like uh, Loam, lands, uh, Punishing Fire, and then also dealing with a Exploration and a... Uh, what's it called? Exploration and Elvish Visionary. Which is pretty good. Drafto Giveaway. Very cool. Nice. Uh, if anyone here is after some standard content, definitely check out Ryan, who I believe also plays Modern and some other decks. I believe he also played uh, Grixis Delva. No, I'm going to say Rug Delva at the World Team Championships. I'm going to screw that up. But Ryan is a very good player. One of Australia's pros, which is cool. So uh, yeah, definitely check out Remix Rubix. But yeah, really nice to get the 5-0. Um, nice to be back on Maverick as well. It's always kind of cool to be a little bit refreshed. And uh, yeah, just play the deck with kind of a, a new eye. Um, but yeah, I thought it was pretty cool. Uh, that is going to be me. I definitely need some sleep and I need to put up a tournament report on the greensunthemes.com from Alec. Uh, a huge thank you to everyone who came in and watched. Uh, a huge thank you to the new subs and followers. Uh, I will be back... Over the weekend, probably, I'll be playing some Death and Taxes and hopefully get back onto Green White Black Depths for a little bit, uh, which is pretty fun. Unfortunately, you did miss the 5-0, but you can find it on my YouTube channel. It'll be there shortly. Um, I'm going to quickly see who else is playing. Hopefully, there's some Legacy players on. Granham. <laughs> nice. All right. Well, we have our, our Legacy player. Uh, yeah, a huge thank you to everyone who's, who's, uh, who's coming and watched. It's always nice to have chat here. I will hopefully be back soon. Uh, most likely... Most likely tomorrow night. I don't think I have anything on tomorrow night, so... Might try to jam some games, but if not... Uh, Sunday for sure. Uh, yeah, if you want to find me on Twitter... You can find me here. Of course, you can find me at the Grand Sun Zenith matchup. .com. A pleasure. A pleasure as always. Enjoy, and I'll, uh, I'll see you guys soon. Ah, uh, Kwambi, you'll have to catch it on YouTube. There we go. Alright, take care, uh, and enjoy.